Cliff? Yes? <laughs> Any more questions? Have I said enough on that? No. <laughs> All right, poke me. Let me say one thing, you see. I am not a Big Bang, uh, I'm not a Big Bang enthusiast. Now, you know, in the astronomers, <laughs> they... <laughs> You know, we, we got in the astronomers. Let me tell you how that happened. They called me up in the spring. This thing is still doing that. <laughs> yes, but it does it when I talk. <laughs> Can you still hear it? All right. All right. Okay. They called me up in the spring and said they wanted the sidewalk astronomers in a national park in September. I said, the only national park we're going to be in this summer is Crater Lake, and it's the 2nd of July. Well, he said, we're not supposed to shoot till September. I said, tough shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so they got all their stuff together on a charter plane and flew it up to Medford and did all that first shooting in July. <laughs> that was when... Uh, uh, one of the stars, and Saturn went in front of one of the stars, you know. We got to watch that through the telescopes at Crater Lake. Anyway, so that was shot up there. Now, in that movie, we're in there for decoration. We're the only people in the, in the astronomers who are not professionals. We're there because we're the colorful people. We're there for decoration. And they didn't want any piece of information coming out of my mouth. <laughs> So at Crater Lake, I'm about to, 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 to pan the Big Bang, just about to pan it. And just when I introduce it, you must have heard of it, cut. <laughs> anyway, that's how that happened. This hurts my ear too much. There. No. Whoops. Come on, fix it. <laughs> Sorry. It's got to be too sore in here. You've got to put it behind my ear or something. Stick it back there. Well, he was afraid if I use the handheld mic and get in front of that thing, it'll, you know what it does, it backfires. Anyway, I can hardly hear myself now. Uh, where was I? Anyway, so, uh, so they shot all that. What was they telling you all that about? The big bang. Oh, yes. So, so it sounds as though I'm pushing the Big Bang. I never talk about the Big Bang except to abuse it. How many of you are willing to go along with the Big Bang? Let's have a show of hands. How many of you are still willing to go along with the Big Bang? Please put up your hands. How many of you are not? Please put up your hands. The rest of you are pure gold, yellow to the core. <laughs> How many aren't sure? <laughs> well, none of us are sure. <laughs> Oh, this still hurts. <coughs> Can't you cut this spring down or something? Here, put a paper towel under there or something. All right, take it off and use that. One step back and I'm fine. Oh, you don't mind in front of those things. Yes, okay. Can you hear me still? Yes. This is quieter, isn't it? Yes. Oh. Anyway, you see, I'm, I'm a, uh, the Big Bang model can be compared and has been compared to a raisin pudding in the oven. And as the pudding gets bigger and bigger, the raisins get lonelier and lonelier. <laughs> so that if you come too late for dinner, there may not be any raisins in your spoon. <coughs> now, there was another batch of people who thought that the universe might be more like a raisin pudding getting bigger and bigger in the oven, and the raisins getting lonelier and lonelier. But as the raisins got lonelier and lonelier, new raisins sprang up in between, so it don't make no never mind when you come for dinner. There are five or six raisins to a spoon. 
So those are the steady state people. But the Big Bang people didn't like it one bit. They said, where did you get those new raisins? <laughs> and the steady state people said, where did you get yours? <laughs> <laughs> now, for some reason, which I was never able to understand, the Big Bang people thought it's okay to get everything all at once, but not to get it little by gradually. <laughs> anyway, I don't see it quite that way. But I have a, a consideration, you see, when you consider what do we see when we look way out to the borders of this universe. First, let me ask, how many of you think the universe is infinite? Please put up your hands. How many think it's finite? Please put up your hands. It's finite, you silly geese. <laughs> The, the observable universe has a boundary about 15 billion light years away. We'll use an old number. About 15 billion light years away. Because if there is anything beyond that, it's going too fast to be part of your universe. It's going so fast that radiation messages cannot come in. And since gravitational messages move the same way, they also can't come in. And the Canadian mail won't come in. <laughs> So there's a border to the observable universe. Now when we consider what happens to the material that we see way out at the border, what we see is that the radiation from there is gravely redshifted, approaching zero energy at the border. Now, if the radiation approaches zero energy at the border, so does the particle energy. But if the particle energy approaches zero at the border, so does the particle mass. From Einstein's 1905 equations, we know that if the energy goes to zero, the mass goes to zero, because E equals M. I know there's a C squared. I have to, do the, I have to clean this up a little bit. Some of you know that equation is E equals MC squared. And you think the big thing is the C squared. The C squared is not in there. The C squared is to tell you how many ergs equals one gram? When we found out that what we call matter is just potential energy, then we have this difficulty. We have two units for it, the erg and the gram. Now, the gram is the, is the energy of an atomic bomb. It's enough to vaporize Berkeley. The erg is the kinetic energy of a two gram a beetle walking one centimeter per second. <laughs> and C squared in those old units is 9 times 10 to the 20th. The speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 10th centimeters per second. We did the CGS system when I was a kid and when Einstein was also a kid. We did the CGS system and the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 10th. And the erg was the unit of energy and the gram was the unit of mass. And when we found out that they're the same thing, we had to find out how many ergs equals one gram. So three times 10 to the 10th squared is nine times 10 to the 20th. And what that equation tells you is that carefully handled, the kinetic energy of nine times 10 to the 20th, two gram beetles walking one centimeter per second would vaporize Berkeley. <laughs> it's the last nine digits that get you. Zeros. <laughs> well, anyway, when you consider what happens out at the border, if the mass approaches zero, if the mass of the particles, as seen by us, if the mass of the particles approaching the border approaches zero, two very interesting consequences follow. We know that all radiation going through a field of low mass particles gets so often picked up and re-radiated that it gets thermalized to 3K. Now the amount of background radiation that we get by this model is the amount which we measure. The amount predicted by the Big Bang is about two orders of magnitude too high.